Hey everyone, welcome to PrepWorks Tutoring. Today we're going to be talking about the set of real numbers. So let's just represent that with one nice big oval. And then inside the set of real numbers, let's label that real numbers. We have two concepts, two classifications of numbers, and that's going to be the irrational numbers over here. irrational, and the rational numbers. And we're going to start by splitting down the rational numbers into several more groups, several more classifications. So inside the rational numbers, we have integers. And we'll get into what all this means in just a second. So we have integers. Inside integers, we have whole numbers. And inside whole numbers, we have natural numbers or counting numbers. They can go by either name. Natural, that's an A, natural. So now we're just going to go over what each of these means, each of these little classifications, rational, irrational, integers, let me underline that, whole numbers, and natural numbers. So a natural number or a counting number is they start with one and they keep going. So two three, four, five, six, and just keeps going on and on. So seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and all those numbers after that. Now note that it doesn't include stuff like say 1.1 or 1.2, only these numbers one, two, three. Think of it of things that you could count on your hand. You don't have a half a finger, you have a whole finger. And that's why they're called counting numbers is because you can easily count them um, and there's just no fractions or anything like that involved. So whole numbers are the same thing as natural numbers, except it adds the number zero. So whole numbers start from zero and they just keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, etc. Integers are the same idea in that they also include this whole set here, but they add negative numbers. So let's say negative six, negative five, negative four, keeps going on either direction. So negative five. Sorry, negative three, negative two, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it keeps going in both directions here. So you'll notice that the natural numbers circle here is inside of the whole number circle. And that's because every single one of these numbers that is a natural number is also a whole number, right? We see here is one, two, three, four, five, six is also represented right here, let me use a different color. It's represented right here. So in this, this um, relationship carries on for whole numbers and integers. Every single whole number is also an integer, right? We see the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we see the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, right here. And we'll see in a second that all integers are also rational numbers and that all rational numbers are also real numbers. And that's why we represent these with the circles that are inside of each other. Um, any of these circles that encompass a smaller circle, so any smaller circles that are inside a larger circle, the smaller circles are also part of the set that is represented in the larger circle. So a rational number can be defined as a number, a fraction with an integer in both the numerator and the denominator. So let's take some, a number like one over three, so one third. Because one is an integer, right? One is an integer and three is an integer. We see that right here. Though it could keep going, say something like 27 over 52. Still, uh, these are still both integers, right? So a rational number is any number that has an integer on the top and, and one at the bottom. And another way that you can check this, say if you have a number in decimal form, is if the decimal either A terminates or B repeats. So say you're given a fraction like 0 0.1 with a bar over it, that means that it just keeps going on. So like 0 0.11111 and you get the idea. So that repeats, so it is a rational number. But because it is, you know, it's not like a, it's not a whole number, right? And it's not an integer. It's not in either of these two classifications or the natural, so any of those three. 
but it is still a rational number. So it's in this big circle, but it's not in any of these. It's not in this one, it's not in this one, okay? So that's the set of rational numbers. Now, if a rational number is something that has, is a number that has, or a fraction that has um, an integer in the top and an integer on the bottom, an irrational number is one that does not meet these um, qualifications. It doesn't meet these criteria. So let's say an irrational number is pi, right? We all know that pi is like something like 3.1415. It just keeps going on and on. It doesn't repeat. It doesn't terminate. So it's just this really, really long number, infinitely long. Um, but it doesn't have, it's not, it is a, it's not a whole number, obviously. It's not a natural number. It's not an integer. And it doesn't, it can't be represented as a fraction where there's an integer on the top and an integer on the bottom. So one example is pi. Another one is the square root of two, right? Because if you ever, if you've ever put um, the square root of two in a calculator, you'll notice it's just this really, you know, long string of numbers. And that's because there are no two integers, whole numbers, or natural numbers that when multiplied become two. So a square root of two is another option because it can't be written with an integer in the top and the numerator and an integer in the denominator. Um, and another fact about irrational numbers, if it's a decimal, so again, these two criteria is here. If it does not terminate, if, it, if the decimal does not repeat, then it is an irrational number. Let's get some practice here. Let's say we have our nice big oval here. We've got the real numbers. I just have irrational here, some rational numbers here. Uh, we have the integers. And then we have whole numbers. And then we have natural numbers. Let's take a look at some examples here. Let's go square root of seven, eight over one, six, negative five, three halves, 40, 40. Um, and let's go square root of two over three. Let's start with square root of seven. If you ask yourself, can square root of seven be written as a fraction with an integer in the bottom and the integer on the top? Well, we can write the square root of seven as any other number with a square root of seven over one, because when you divide anything by one, it is still the same thing. However, because square root of seven is not part of the integers, it is an irrational number because again, there's an irrational number on the top uh, it's not an integer, which makes it an irrational number. So that's square root of seven, let's cross that out. Now let's look at eight over one. So when we have eight over one, anything divided by one is itself, right? So eight divided by one is still eight because there is one eight and eight. So if we write this as eight, then we see over here that because natural numbers are basically just a set of numbers that start at one, just keep going, eight is a natural number. And because the natural numbers are inside of the whole numbers, inside of the integers, and inside of the rational numbers, we know that eight is also a whole number. It's also an integer. It's also rational. It's also a real number. Okay, so that's eight or eight over one. Now let's look at six. Six is the same idea where it's just um, a number that's part of each of these sets, natural, whole, integer, rational, and it just keeps going. So six is part of this set, this set, this set, just keeps going on. So that's why all these circles are, you know, encompassing each other. Negative five. So we know from here that the natural numbers start at one and the whole numbers start at zero. This means that can negative five be a natural or whole number? No. So it's not a natural number, not a natural number not a whole number, and it starts in integers. So let's go negative five right here because we know that the integers encompass those negative numbers. So that is negative five. Now three over two. So you see here that integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers, they're all, I guess, what you might refer to as whole numbers, which is a whole nother classification, but there's no like sort of fraction. They all have, they're all to become a fraction, they all just be divided by one. 
whereas 3 over 2 is not divided by 1. So it is a rational number, though, because when we have 3 by itself, 3 is an integer, and 2 is also an integer. And because it has an integer in the numerator and the denominator, it is still rational. So we're going to put 3 halves right up there in the rational. Now, we did mention that these sets here just keep on going. So if we look at 40, right? 40 just is a continuation of the natural numbers, continuation of the whole numbers, and a continuation of the integers. So we're going to put 40 in the natural numbers, and it too just keeps moving on to each individual set. And finally, let's look at square root, over, square root of 2 over 3. So we do know that 3 is an integer. However, square root of 2 is not an integer. And because to be a rational number, it must have an integer in the numerator and the denominator, square root of 2 over 3, unfortunately, is not a rational number. So we're going to put it right over here. And that is the real number system. Thank you for watching.